Hello singers, I'm Sophie Shear, and today we are talking about musical theater. Ah. Okay, so here's the deal. Musical theater is different from classical singing because it has a little more sharpness to it. Basically, we know from science that it has a little more pharyngeal resonance. Let me show you what I mean. So here's your head as if it were cut in half. Your head voice resonates here in the top of the nose, the bridge of the nose. So that's more like very soft, very wafty. Okay, the pharynx is this little section back here, the back of the nose and the back of the mouth. If you have resonance here, it takes on a little more of a sharp, whiny flavor, like ha, more like Bugs Bunny. So the the difference between classical singing and musical theater is that classical is most often always head voice, only head voice. In fact, if you've ever studied classical, you've probably gotten chewed out for trying to use a different part of your voice. Okay, now musical theater, that's not the case. You want that brassy, sharp, edgy, whiny sound. This is perfect for stage because it carries really well. It, it's very loud without being dangerous and it really cuts through the ears of the listener. So it kind of cuts beyond the music or any of the other voices on stage. So let's try an exercise that's going to take your voice from head voice and migrate it into more of a musical theater usability by dropping it into the pharynx. Different resonator altogether, okay? This exercise goes like this. We start off in a head voice. And then we're gonna take the head and drop it down, all that resonance that's up here wafting in the top of the nose, we're gonna drop it down into the pharynx. So it's nice and nasty. If you have trouble with this, you might refer to some of my other YouTube videos to kind of develop that pharyngeal voice before you come back to this exercise. So, so we're starting in head again. Taking that soft, sweet sound and just adding a little more guts to it by making it really nasty. This will kind of feel wrong. A lot of singers are worried about sounding too nasally. But for musical theater, this is exactly what you're after. Exactly. So embrace that annoyingness, okay? Now try this in a song. So, for instance, if you're going to do um, the song from The Little Mermaid. Up where they walk, up where they run, up where they stay all day in the sun. So that's a kind of a light mix that has a little more head voice than it does the pharyngeal voice. So you'll have to go for the specific performance that you're after and kind of make the tone exactly perfect for that song, that performance. And you'll have to take into account your natural vocal strengths here. If you have a naturally softer voice, you may want to add more power because it demonstrates something that people would be surprised by to hear in your voice. If you have a sharper voice, you may have to soften it a little so it doesn't come off as too abrasive. Okay, so you can do this in the melody of the song. So up where they run. So that's all head. Probably a little too soft for this song. So now I'm gonna drop some of that sound back into the pharynx. step further just depends on what's going to sound best for that melody. That may be a little too abrasive. So just kind of work with it. Find your, you know, your your sweet spot. 
and then translate it into the lyrics. Gee, 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 up where they run, up where they gee, 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 up where they stay, gee, 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 gee. I want that to be a little stronger. Gee, 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 up where they stay all day in the sun, wandering free. Bring it down a little there. Wish I could be part of that world. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe here so you can get all the new material for free. And connect with me on Facebook and Twitter at Sophie Shear.